Hi everybody. I'm going to show you how to tie a parachute sulfur. Uh, this is a great, uh, highly effective fly. Uh, this fish is uh, this fly is uh, fished directly in the surface. It can be fished as a dry fly. Uh, it's it can be fished as an emerger. It can also be fished as a spinner. It's uh, got many great qualities. It's not the toughest fly in the world to tie, but I am going to tie this with the assumption that you are slightly um, tying it at one step above a beginner. I'm going to go over a few parts of this fly while I tie. I'm going to assume that there are a few basics that you already have in place, so you'll notice that I'll skip a few parts while tying this fly. I already have the thread tied on. If you noticed, I did tie the thread in the center of the hook uh, in the, at the shank. Uh, in some cases, you want to start at the back. Some cases, start at the front. For this fly, I like to start in the center because I'm going to tie on my tail first, then I'm not even lock it in place, tie forward, tie in the wing and, and the post, and then uh, go back, finish the body and um, the hackle. So this will be a pretty uh, relatively easy fly to tie. It should take about approximately five minutes if you're tying this at most. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this on a straight eye dry fly hook. This is one of those, uh, the big eye hooks. It, the big eye really nice whenever you're in the middle of a hatch and you need to get a fly tied on quickly. That big eye really jumps out at the tippet and makes it for a great hole to uh, put the tippet into. The first thing, I, as I said, I'm gonna tie the, uh, the tail on. I'm using micro fibbits. Uh, these are just, you know, obviously a great synthetic. I do prefer natural over synthetic, but these tails really, um, these tailing fibers really seem to hold the fly up and give it a nice profile in the water. I'm going to take about four of the fibers out and trim them. We don't want to go too tail heavy on this pattern. Let me tie in the tail. If you notice, I'm just going to tie it in with just a few wraps. I'm going to make sure it's extending out to the, the correct length of, of the tail. Uh, after I have it the correct length, I'm just going to tie in approximately four or five wraps just to lash it into place. I'm going to trim the fibers coming off the eye of the hook. Then I'm going to wrap forward and get ready to tie in my parachute post. So I'm not going to really finish off the tail yet. I'm uh, going to tie the parachute post in. I'm going to tie it approximately two and a half to... Uh, uh, hook eyes back from the front of the hook. I want to leave a little bit of space for my thorax and I also want to leave some space to tie off my uh, my thread at the very end of this pattern. For the parachute post, I'm going to use this material called um, actually parachute post wing. Uh, it's made by hairline dubbing. Uh, the color that I'm using today is fluorescent chartreuse. I really like these bright colors. They seem to really jump out whenever you're fishing these flies on the water. You can fish them at a, a pretty nice distance and having this parachute posted with this fluorescent color really jumps out. To tie this on, they give you really nice thick clumps. Um, the one problem with these clumps, they're almost too thick. So I'm going to cut off approximately you know, three inches of this, which will probably be a little more excessive than I would need. And from the, that three inch clump, I'm actually going to pull some of the threads away. The reason I'm going to do this, whenever I get this tied on, I'm actually going to loop it around the thread and tied in so it's almost making a, a post straight up and down but it's going to be tied on top of the hook. I don't want to have too much of that that material there. To get this tied in, this seems to be where a lot of people have have uh, their struggles. I'm going to place my parachute post behind my thread. From that point, I can fold it over and I grab it by the tips. So I can slide this post anywhere I want. Now to tie it on, simple. I have it locked on the rear side of the thread. I'm just going to take my thread, extend it to the top, before I wrap my thread the whole way around, I'm going to pull this post down. Now it's directly on top of the hook shank. And now I can just make a few figure eight wraps. So I'm sure that that post is, is locked into place. And then to make it very easy for me to wrap my hackle up, I'm going to go up once with my thread, grab my parachute post, and now wrap helicopter style from the bottom up over my parachute post. After I get a couple going up, I'm going to bring it back down. Now um, there are there are tools out there that make this a little bit easier. Um, once you've done a lot of these flies, it, it gets very simple to the point where you can pretty much just grab it with one and uh, make a couple wraps. After you have those wraps in place, and you can look at it, you can look at this post and realize like that it, that that uh, hackle is not going to go anywhere. It looks pretty good to me right now. I'm just going to lock it in place. And now I have pretty much the toughest part of my fly out of the way. I have my tail tied in, I have my post, 
And now I'm just going to really finish the fly in a sense, even though it only looks like I have about half of it done. Now, some people will prefer to trim this post. Uh, for me, maybe I'll trim the top sometimes. For the most part, I just leave it long until the very end of the fly when I make my final cut. I'm going to grab onto my tail, bring my thread to the, to the rear of the hook. While wrapping it back, I'm going to try to hold the, the tailing fibers up just a hair. And before I make my last uh, wrap, which will be just about a, where the barb would be if this, if this was a barbed hook, I'm going to grab my tail, lift it up, and put a thread underneath it. That's just making my tail just sit up just a, uh, just a hair. So whenever this goes into the water, it's going to sit nice down and, and flush against the water. I'm going to dub my body. I have um, some, some rabbit dubbing that I blended myself. Um, one of my buddies and I actually blended this. It's going to match the natural here in western Pennsylvania. This is again a sulfur and uh, a size 16 sulfur. Let me dub this. I do want to make it similar to that cigar type uh, body. I want a real, really fine uh, rear of this of this fly, and I want to taper it and make it a little bit larger as I get closer to the, the thorax. Let me get a little bit of dubbing in here. I'm not going to apply any wax or anything like that. I'm really gonna, not going to need it for this fly. I have my dubbing on there. It looks like that, that'll probably be enough. Let me wrap it up. I want to just get just enough at the rear of the, of the fly. I'm going to start layering it just a hair as I get closer to that thorax. When I get to the post, I'm going to wrap it around my post in that figure eight pattern. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but there are a few fibers from that, that rabbit further that are stuck in there, and I just want to get those out of there before I finish this fly. I'm having trouble pulling them out with my thumb, so I'm just going to grab a pair of hackle pliers and uh, pull them out the rest of the way. Okay. All right, after I have that, I'm going to tie in my hackle. Um, I'm going to be using some, um, this is called Collins Hackle. He's out of New York. Let me show you the label on this hackle. That's uh, Pine City, New York. A really great guy. I bought this hackle off him a couple of years in a row at a uh, fly show in Somerset, New Jersey. This color he calls uh, Bard Cream. It's a really nice color. Um, it really just seems to do well with this sulfur pattern. This, I'm going to use a saddle hackle because when this is, again, lying on top of the water, I'm going to be fishing this in more uh, slow water, uh, more presentation style uh, instances. So I don't need this to, I don't need the hackle to really hold it up. I want this fly sitting really tight in the film. Um, these saddle hackles are really nice. I'm just going to, you know, go to the bottom of this, tear it off, uh, tear off that very bottom part of that hackle. I'm just going to make a couple quick trims. It's a little trick I've seen used by many tires. Uh, by trimming that bottom, it's almost creating just like a almost a Velcro effect in a sense that my thread can hang on to and it won't pull out. I'm just going to put a few wraps uh, for this, this hackle. I have it locked in. Um, now I'm just going to make approximately three turns of hackle. I don't want to go too hackle crazy on this fly. It's going to float. Again, it's going to be slower water, so I'm not going to have to worry about it. Um, as I'm making that third turn, I'm going to try to... I lost it there. I'm gonna, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, I'm, and I'll exaggerate it here. I'm really trying to um, pick up my, my hackle and move it with each turn so it kind of locks in place and also so it doesn't uh, push down the previous hackle. I have a couple wraps in place. Uh, as I brought this around the third time, I'm going to pull it straight towards me and down. Then I'm going to take my left hand, reach over, pull up all the previous hackle, and lock this in place. I'm just going to make a couple quick wraps over it. There's one, there's two, and I put a third wrap. After I have that third wrap, I'm going to cut the hackle off, get it out of the way. All right, now before I before I finish this fly, I always like to just kind of look at it, make sure there's no uh, extra extra fiber sticking out. In this case, I Looks like I may have got them all. There might be one that's sticking out. I may try to hold it up for the time being, and it just seems to pop back down. So I'm going to trim that one real quick. Okay, um, now I'm just going to look at, examine the bottom of the fly. Everything looks exactly the way I want it. So I'm just going to put a couple wraps in there. Do a half hitch. 
second half hitch and lock everything in place there are some tools out there to, that accomplish this but I think it's just as fast with your with your fingers I have that locked in I'm gonna cut my thread and it's at this point I'm gonna trim my parachute post I pull it straight up again you can leave this longer not necessarily that long but you can always trim it shorter and shorter on the on the water when you get it there I'm gonna leave mine relatively lengthy for the time being and I might trim it once it gets to the water uh, but that's gonna that's gonna do it for me this is a, a nice little uh, sulfur parachute uh, the tail is just arched straight up a uh, nice little body very slender body uh, the hackle looks okay not too many it's not gonna overwhelm the fly and that parachute post is really gonna stand out so again this is a size 16 uh, sulfur parachute relatively simple to tie and I uh, really hope it works out for you in the future and uh, as my great uncle always says tight lines to everybody